Morning, I'm just going to show you quickly how to rig a float for kerpa fishing. You'll see I'm using a, a high vis yellow line here and the reason for that is I've got control of the line all the time, I can see where it is. So it just gives you a much better control factor. First thing I'm going to do is just cut off a little length of line there, 20-30 centimeters, not in, that in critical. And uh, we'll come back to why I cut that line just now. So the first thing we do is just rig it through the float like that. Put the line on there. We're going to use this as a sliding float because we're fishing fairly deep water. And the next thing we're going to do is tie on the hook. And in this case, I'm using a higher busser size one octopus beak hook. You'll see it's got the offset on the eye there. And whatever knot you're confident with, just go for it. Let's get that hook attached. In this case, I'm just using a uni knot. A bit of lube on there. Pull it tight, slide it down. So that first piece of line that I cut, we're actually going to make a little stopper there. And what's going to happen is this float is going to slide up as your weight and your bait goes down and eventually gets to the stopper knot and will balance the float such that it pulls this float a fair distance under the water. And then we get a good bite indication. Okay, so taking that piece of line there, we go above the float and what we're going to do is make a little knot and that knot I form basically by making a loop in the line so we've got a tag end on each side next to the main line and then passing it through that loop and around the main line at least six times six to eight times is fine and again we pull on the two tag ends there and we've got a nice little knot formed there and we can slide this up and down the line depending on what depth we want to fish. Now the trick with this is don't cut your tag ends too short. Leave them about an inch, two centimeters. Trim them off so that they go through the guides easily. If they're too short they're going to hook in the guides. When it's long like that it folds nicely and goes through the guides. So what we now have is a hook, float, the float goes up to there and stops against that knot that we just formed. The next thing we need to do is we need to balance this float so that it cocks nicely and it gives us a bit of weight to cast. So in this case I'm using a 6 gram float there, we're going to start adding some weights. Essentially what that 6 grams means is that the float can carry 6 grams and that'll cock it perfectly. So I'm going to start off adding quite a few split shot. What I like to do is to keep most of the split shot together. So we've got a central area where the weight is and it also prevents tangles. If you start spreading them out you're going to get a lot more tangles. So there I've added six split shot. What we're going to do is just test it next to the boat here. Put it in the water, slides through. And what I'm aiming for is to, to get, get that there. float somewhere near the top end there where you've got that black and white and orange stripe. So I need to add another split shot or two. We're getting pretty close. So this is just trial and error until you get it right. So I'm going to add another two and then see where we're at. We also need to remember that we're going to be putting a fairly big worm on there. so. We need to compensate for the weight of that. So you can see there I've got a nice contrast between the orange, the black and the white. But I haven't allowed for the worm the weight of the worm, so I'm going to remove one split shot here.
And that's pretty good because once I add the weight of the worm, it's going to pull it down to that, so that just the orange and white bit is exposed. Okay. So now the next thing to do is to determine the depth where I want this float. So I know we're sitting roughly in about three meters of water here. So I'm just going to feed some line out here. And we're going to take the stopper knot and slide it up the line. And what I'm aiming for here is to actually go a little bit deeper than the depth that I'm fishing in and then I'll slowly bring it back up. So if I release there you'll see the line pulling through until it gets to the stopper knot. Okay, so I can see it's cocking the float nicely there. So I'm just going to do it right next to the boat here. I'm still not on the bottom, give some more line. And you can see it's not cocking properly, but I know basically from where the split shot are that I'm about a 10 centimeters over depth. So what I need to do is if I move that knot up, which is now on the spool, I'm just going to take it and move it 40 centimeters up. And what should happen now is my float should cock. And there you can see that the float has cocked nicely, so I'm just off the bottom. And that's really where I want to be. If the fish move up, all I do is slide this knot up. I'll stop a knot until I'm at the, the depth I want to be at. And through the day the fish will move up and down. But essentially what we've done now is set our depth. There's one thing I like to do, and that's to move one split shot away from the pack, like that. So we've still got a good 20 centimeters there, where we've got nice free movement of the hook and the worm. So what's going to happen, this is going to sink down, and the rest of the crew joins it there, so it straightens it out nicely. Right, let's get some lines in the water and see if we can catch some fish.